after me, I receive the word. I believe the word. I work on the word. The word works on me. See, I receive the word. I believe the word. I work on the word. The word works on me. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 to 28. Genesis chapter 1. Shall we read one go, verse 27? One go. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. The Bible says so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. According to Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, you and I were created in the image of God. Say, I was created in the image of God. Now we come to verse 28 and let's go. Verse 28, one go. The Bible says, then after God had created man in his own image, the Bible says, then God blessed them. Say, God blessed them. And said to them, one go. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. After God has created man and he had blessed man, he said to man, Have dominion over the fish of the sea. Over the fowl of the air and over every creeping thing that creeps or moves on the earth. Now, I want you to understand the three dimensional authority and power that God gave to man. First, God said, have dominion over the fish of the sea. In other words, when man was created, man was mandated by God to rule over the fish of the sea. He says over the birds of the earth and over every creeping thing, anything that moves on the earth, God gave man dominion to rule over it. Now my point is this, how many fishes in the sea do you control? How many fishes in the sea do you control? None. How many birds in the air do you control? None. How many animals that move on the land do you control? Possibly some of you have got farms in Maasai land or wherever. But still, you don't have total control over the fishes in the sea, over the birds in the air, and over the animals that creep on the earth. God was speaking a prophetic language, a figurative language. He was not just talking about the fish, the physical fish in the sea, because none of us control fishes in the sea. Neither was he talking about the physical birds that fly in the air. No. When God created you and he says, my son, my daughter, have dominion over the fish of the sea, what God was trying to say was that have dominion over the powers that are in the sea. Say powers. Say powers. Say powers. Number two, he says, have dominion over the territorial powers that are in the air. Authorities, powers, forces, demonic forces that rule in the atmosphere. God says, have dominion over them. First, have dominion over the marine spirits, the spirits and the powers and the forces that project from the water bodies. You have been mandated by God to overrule them. Cross your legs if you can and say, I am in charge. Over every demon, over every spirit, over every authority, in the name of Jesus. God gave you mandate to overrule every power that projects from the water bodies. Powers that rules in the air and powers that projects from the land. So from the day you were created, you were given superior mandates over them. Say superior mandates. 
The reason is that this world in which we live in, I said it um, in the course of the week, that it is so, uh, you will be a very um, 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 pitiful um, personality if all you know is the things of the physical. The world in which we live in exists in two parts. Say two parts. Say two parts. There is the part of the world that you can see me and I can see you. That is the physical world. Say the physical world. And there is the part of the world that you cannot see except people that have got spiritual eyes. That part of the world is called the spirit realm or the spirit world. That means we've got the physical world. We've got the, that is this part of the world. In the physical world, one plus one is two and two plus two is four. In the other world, which is called the spirit realm or the spirit world, one plus one can be a thousand and two plus two can be ten thousand. In the spirit realm or the spiritual world, that is where things actually happen. The spiritual realm or the spirit world is the we world. Let me tell you this. There is nothing that happens here in the physical, not unless it first happens in the spirit. For somebody to prosper, they prosper in the spirit first and it manifests in the physical. For somebody to do well, they have to first, it must first have happened in the spirit, then it manifests in the physical. For someone to even die, the person dies in the spirit before it happens in the physical. For anything to happen here in the physical, it must have happened in the spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? So that is why somebody can go to a witch doctor and the witch doctor can tell them, bring this, bring blood, bring this, and after that I will make you prosper. Why? Because the prosperity does not originate here from the earth, it originates from the spirit. They can do things in the spirit that can activate some things in your life in the physical. That is why sometimes somebody will be so healthy, so doing so well, all of a sudden you don't know. They just wake up and they die. Like, ah, what happened? No, the person might have possibly died in the spirit. Today I pray for you. If there is something that is happening in the spirit that you have got no idea of, that is against you, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. That is why sometimes a man of God can also look at you and tell you in a year's time, this is what is going to happen. And you begin to wonder, if you look at yourself, it, is not, it doesn't look like it's going to happen, but the person might have seen what is in the spirit. So they tell you from the spiritual perspective what is yet to happen. I was telling you about um, 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 the superintendent gave a testimony, uh, was it two, two days ago, about how she, he was in a very, very, posted to a very, very far place. And I looked at him and I said, sir, God is about to move you to the city, to a higher position. And it happened. It happened so because spiritually I had seen what was yet to happen. I pray for you. If there is something also that is about to happen for you and it is delaying in the spirit, I command a manifestation. If you are here, shout, I receive it. So, the world in which we live in is not just about the physical world. If you really need to understand the dynamics of this world, there is more to this world than what we see. There is more to this world than just um, um, food and drink and, and school and money. There is more to this world than what you can see with your physical eyes. So, Paul, the other day, was writing to the church in Ephesus. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Let's read it. Ephesians 6, verse 12. Shall we read one go? Paul says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. It says, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Paul says, this world in which we live in, it is not just about the physical. There is a battle we are in against.
against the powers of the spirit. There is a battle we are in against powers that are unseen. There is a battle we are in against forces that are in the heavenly places. Listen to me and listen good. Some of you, you know well, you have been to school. You've got a certificate. Some of you even have got a master's degree. You've got a master's degree. But even though you've got a master's degree, still it looks like you are still struggling to even secure a job. Some of you, you are even working. You've got certificates better than the person higher than you. But it looks like still nothing seems to be moving. You have done everything in your physical capacity to advance, to get married, to, to, to move to your next level, but it's not happening. And you begin to ask yourself, what at all is wrong here? Because Paul makes us understand this world we live in, it is not just about your certificates. It is not just about your connections. There is a power, a force that controls the universe. There are forces with which we contend with. That is why somebody who has been to school, who has it all, is supposed to get a good job, but no good job comes. That is why somebody who, who is supposed to get married, ready for marriage, but it looks like nothing is happening. That is why certain families, they struggle and struggle and struggle, and you begin to wonder what is wrong with this family. The reason is simple. We do not wrestle against flesh. And blood. There is more to life than what you are just saying. And today, any wrestle you are in, any spiritual wrestle, any battle you are in, we command that battle to be terminated. Do you understand what a wrestling match has come? Uh, can, oh, uh, can somebody borrow me a belt? Or uh, um, um, those ushering uh, clubs that you use. Come, come, come. Come, some, another person, come. I want to demonstrate something for you to understand. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Now, in the olden days, this word resto, scripture, this word resto came from the wrestling matches that you watch from your homes. Now, before, in the olden days, this was what wrestling was. Wrestling to happen, come to the stage so that people can see. There is a line that is drawn. Say a line. A line that is drawn and one party stands here. And another party stands here. Say, this is you. And they draw a line. And one person will be the referee. This you will be here. <laughs> the way it's, it's like he's ready to beat the man up. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> we are in church. <laughs> now, a line is drawn. So the line is drawn. This person is ready to wrestle against that. But now, the referee will stand in between. Say, we rest or not? Put the scripture there for me. Yeah. Now, the referee will stand in between. All that the ref Once the referee says, go. As long as this person is here, and that person is here, there is no battle. Immediately, one person crosses the line. The battle begins. Let me give you the revelation. Paul said, we do not rest her. Against flesh and blood. Some of you, as long as you remain in your corner, nothing happens. Nobody fights against you. Nobody comes out against you. But the day you cross the barrier that they set for you, all hell breaks loose. But today, I have a word for you. Any barrier they have set for you, any limitation they have placed on your life, I decree and declare it is broken. 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 In the name of Jesus. Listen to me and listen good. Listen, watch this here. You know, as long as some of you, you don't desire to move forward, you are okay. As long as you don't want to get married, you are okay. As long as you don't want to move forward, you are, but the day you decide to move forward, that is the day all hell breaks loose against your life. But whether the enemy likes it or not, I declare over you, you shall move forward. I said 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 you shall move forward. Shout, I will move forward. If you want to be a mediocre, you remain here. But tell yourself, the Bible says we serve a God 
who has everything. He is the monarch of the universe. He controls the gold, the silver. He controls everything. The Bible says he sits on the circle of the earth. I pray for you. Any barrier they have set for you, today I push you forward. Today I push you forward. Today I push you forward. I declare you shall cross that barrier. You shall break that limitation. If you are here, shout, I receive it. Never settle for small and little. It is not your portion. Never settle to become a mediocre. As long as you remain a mediocre, you are okay. But the day you cross the battle, the enemy wages war. Can I pray for somebody? Anything you have never experienced before, any level you thought you have never you will never go to. I kneel on this altar of God. And I pray for you. After this conference, you shall go there. I said 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 you shall go there. In the office you thought you would never enter. In the level you thought you would never get. I speak as a man of God and a prophet of God. On this last day of this conference, I decree and declare, enter that office. Enter that next level. Enter that realm of power. Enter that realm of faith. Enter the realm of prosperity. Enter the realm. Enter the level. If you are here, shout, I receive. The conference is dubbed next level. In other words, you were here, you were okay. You were here, you were comfortable. You were at this level and everything was okay. But you tried to cross and there was an opposition. The man tried to battle you. But whether they battle you or not, today I pray for you. Jehovah shall move you to your next level. Jehovah shall move you to where you belong. Jehovah shall move you to where you are supposed to be. Anyone here who has never seen marriage in your home, I speak as a man of God. And I declare as a prophet, may you receive it in your home. Anyone here you have never encountered 10 million that is yours before, 1 million that is yours before, 100 million that is yours before. In Maduni Mikate, I speak as a prophet and I declare what you have not seen, may God give it to you. What you have not experienced, may God give it to you. The level you have not got into, may God take you there. If you are here, shall I receive it? Shout, I cross the barrier. Shout, I cross the barrier. Shout, I cross the barrier. You know, it's a limitation they have said. But, but, but you tell yourself, I'm going to move. I'm going to advance. I'm going to break through. And sometimes when you start to cross, they start to fight you. They try to bring you down. Can I tell you something? As long as there are people that are waiting for you to come down, sometimes some people, because there is an opponent, I mean, imagine this is my opponent and the barrier has been set and I try to cross and he tries to push me back to where I belong. I try to cross, but he tries to push me. But as long as I'm here, there is no push. But once I try to cross, there is a force, a power that is limiting you. Today, there is something called the hand of God. That hand of God can come upon this opposition and pull him away for you to get to your next level. I pray for you in Jesus' name. Every opposition in your house, at your workplace, in your office, every opposition in your family, every opposition in your business, every opposition in your ministry, I speak as a prophet. May God remove it. May God remove it. May God remove it. May God remove it. If you are here, shout, I receive it. Paul, the other day said in the book of Thessalonians uh, 2.18, he says that I want, in 2 Thessalonians 2.18, he said, I wanted to come to you, but Satan hindered me. Say, I, Paul, you know who Paul is? Paul is the one that wrote to test of the New Testament. This Bible we read. Paul says, brethren, he says, concerning, uh, 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 is, where are you reading? Not one, 18. Paul wrote two tenths of this New Testament. And then now, he wanted to visit the church in Thessalonica. But Satan hindered him. Any Satan that is hindering your life. I prophesy, may that Satan be removed. May that Satan be 
be removed. If you are here, shout, I receive it. Say, every opposition in my career, in my business, I stand on the word of God. And I declare, in the name of Jesus, today, may that opposition be removed in the name of Jesus. Sit down. Apostle Paul wanted to visit the church in Thessalonica. But the enemy was hindering him. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 16. Paul said again, a great and effectual door has been opened unto me, but there are many adversaries. Okay, let's read this first scripture before we go on. One go, therefore. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He says, we wanted to come to you even time and again, but who hindered them? Satan. Now, this is a man who was caught in the third heavens. Any hindrance to your next level, today I command, let it be removed. Any hindrance to your marriage, I declare, let it be removed. Any hindrance to your business, I prophesy, let it be removed. Any hindrance in your career, I declare, let it be removed. Any barrier to your business progress, I speak as a prophet, let it be removed in the name of Jesus. Can I paraphrase this scripture to make it sound well to you? I wanted to get millions, but Satan hindered me. I wanted to get married, but Satan hindered me. I wanted to do great business, but Satan hindered me. I wanted to get that tender, but Satan hindered me today. If that is your word, I cancel that word. And, and no more hindrance in your life. No more opposition. No more limitation. If you are here, shout, I receive it. Some of you, you have been hindered and hindered and hindered to an extent that you don't know how to advance anymore. But after today, in the spirit of witchcraft from your village, in the spirit of witchcraft in that office that is hindering your progress, I command it to catch fire. 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 If you are here, shall fire. Sit down for a minute. So, Paul says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. There are powers that contend with us. There are powers that fight against us. There are powers that are, that are wrestling with us. That is why tonight I'm coming to preach to you on something I have titled Breaking the Power of Witchcraft. Say Breaking. The power, the power of witchcraft. Why? Those of you that are not talking, that are not saying it, that means you are one of them. <laughs> if anybody is not talking, suspect them. I said breaking the power, the power of, witchcraft. of witchcraft. I can see some people who are still not talking. I said breaking, breaking the, power the power of witchcraft. Of witchcraft. Listen to me. Paul said we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. In other words, they are forces that are beyond human flesh that fight against us. And he says, but against principalities. Somebody say principalities. Principalities are the highest of the hierarchy in the demonic kingdom from Satan himself. We call it what? Sai. How do you say it here? Satan. Satan. Satan, Satan, Satan. Some, some people say Satan, some people say Satan, Satan. You are confusing me, it's okay. <laughs> you say Satan, Shindwe, or something like that. Shindwe. Shindwe. That's Satan in your house, in your family. Shindwe. Shindwe, Kabisa. That's Satan in your house. Let's go. He says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
against powers. Somebody say powers. The next in the hierarchy is powers. I'm not dealing with principalities. I'm not dealing with powers. Now it says against rulers of the darkness of this age. Uh, that is the new age order. Now, now the next one, it says against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Now those are my problem tonight. It says spiritual hosts of wickedness. Witchcraft is a wicked spirit. Witchcraft's intention is to harm, injure, and stop the will of God concerning your life. Witchcraft is a practice that is done in the spiritual realm with the intention to harm, to injure you, to hurt you, and to stop the will of God from happening in your life. God's will is for you to become a millionaire. God's will is for you to break through. God's will is for you to advance. But what the spirit of witchcraft simply does is God said you should cross the barrier. The spirit of witchcraft is no, you ain't going to cross that barrier. You're going to remain here. They oppose you. They restrict you. They make sure your business goes down. They make sure you never get married. They make sure there are accidents on the road. They make sure people just suffer sicknesses that cannot be explained. Doctors will tell you there are no medical reasons. They can't simply understand why you are sick, but still, uh, you can feel, you will be able to feel there is something wrong with you. All the MRIs, the CT scans, all those things will not be able to find and diagnose your problem, but you know there is something still wrong in your body. That is a witchcraft disease. They are dead. The intent of witchcraft is to break you down, make you suffer, prevent the will of God for your life. The Bible calls them spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Today, if there is any witchcraft manipulation in your house, in your family, in your that will look so diplomatic suspect them tonight is not the night for diplomacy it's a night for spiritual warfare if you really understand what witchcraft is you'll be very very serious about what we are saying but you'll be able to engage in spiritual battle say in the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus. Any, power any power of witchcraft, of witchcraft. fighting fight. my, life. my life today, today. By, fire, by fire I declare First Samuel, chapter 28, verse 8. First Samuel, chapter 28, verse 8. Shall we read? One go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Give me King James, please. He says, so Saul disguised himself. Say disguised. Yes. The first thing that happens or you see with people that practice witchcraft, they always disguise themselves. Shall we read one go? Uh-huh. 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 He says, so wanted to go and see a witch doctor. Why is that, that cloth? That, open it for me. So wanted to go and see a witch doctor. Open it. Open, put it around me. And the Bible says, so disguised himself. Say disguised. People that practice witchcraft, the first thing they do on their road to their practice is that they disguise themselves. They don't go like you know them. They don't go like you see them. They don't go like you see them. They will tell you, I'm going to Arusha for holiday. Hey! 
which holy day you left all the nice places in Nairobi. You couldn't go to Zanzibar, Arusha. The devil is a liar. Listen to me. You work with people, you work with people in offices. They look nice in the day, but at night you don't know what they consult. You don't know where they go. And you come to church, you are saying, ah, no, I will not come. Come for prayer meeting, oh, no, you will not come. Hey, if you only knew the forces some people work with in that same office, you are applying for a tender. You don't know who, where somebody has taken his or her papers before they brought that and before they made the application. Listen to me. I was here the other day sitting here signing a book. Somebody came, man of God, I'm applying for a tender. Pray over it. I said, I laid my hands on it. And then I said, oh, there were people that wanted that tender, but I speak as a spiritual man that I take that tender I give you. I, he came, I saw her. This he says, oh, man of God, it is done. And not that man was applying for a tender in a very big family. Here in this country, I'm not talking about anywhere. I said, God, somebody wanted to switch it, but I take it and give it to you. He also got Listen, just as a spiritual man can speak for things to happen, somebody can take his or her documents to a witch doctor and say, hey, I want this position. John is there. Let John be fired so that I can get it. You don't know what will happen. All of a sudden, you are at the workplace, nothing has happened, and all of a sudden, you are fired, and someone takes your position, and you think it is natural. No, it is not natural. Somebody practice witchcraft against you, but today, I stand on this altar. If you are here, shout, I receive. They disguise themselves. And number two, they put on another raiment. Say another raiment. They put on another form. Some people who actually are witches, they will turn into something else. At night, you are sleeping with them. But... They have gone 3,000 kilometers to a witchcraft coven. You wake them up and they are like a log. They had to switch back to make things happen. Listen to me. People that practice witchcraft, some of them take another form. Say another form. Say another form. Some turn into snakes. Some turn into what? Some turn into what? And they go to their witchcraft meetings. Today, the other day, you know, my biological father is a bishop. My, 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 one day in his neighborhood, he said, no witch is flying in this town. When my father spoke, try. He said, no witch is flying in this town. One stubborn witch said, who is he? he de she decided to fly. By 7 a.m. in the morning, we found her on top of a roof, naked. Why? Because she was flying in the spirit. And the spirit, the, the old man shot a spiritual arrow. And she was found on top of a roof. He had to be called to come and pray for her before she could descend. Listen to me. Any wish that would try to fly tonight. Haduni mikapaya. Imatodo bosata. Imbranto sateya. I stand and I declare, may the fire touch that wish. May the power of God be released against that wish. And the wish flying to attack your job, attack your marriage, attack your business. That wish dies tonight. I said that wish dies tonight. If you are here, shall fire. Shall fire. Shall fire. Draw a line over your house and we declare that no witch is permitted to fly. No witch is permitted to fly. No witch is permitted to fly. If you are here, shall fire. Today, when you get home, touch your doorpost and declare my house is a no go area. This room is a no go area. 
this neighborhood is a no-go area. The Bible says, surely they shall gather, but not by me, says the Lord. When they gather in their witchcraft covenants, because Jehovah does not endorse it, their gathering shall scatter. They are gathering against your job, let it scatter. They are gathering against your marriage, let it scatter. They are gathering against your business, let it scatter. Whatever they gather against, I stand as a spiritual man and I declare, let their gathering scatter in the name of Jesus. They take another form, sit down. And he went, two men with him. Nobody practices witchcraft alone. Witchcraft is not practiced in solitary. Witchcraft is practiced in a group. We call it witchcraft coven. Covens. They come together in a group and they conjure, they divine, they release astral projections, they release forces into the atmosphere. They lose, they use what we call the law of representation in the spirit. This is what the law of representation does. For instance, you they would take a lamp or a cow or a sheep, and they will say, This sheep represents heads. As we cut the head of this sheep, has this head will be cut off. Now, as they are trying, so when they, if they manage to cut off the head of that sheep in their witchcraft coven in the spiritual realm, it is automatically reflected in the physical. The man will be walking. All of a sudden, my neck, my neck collapses and die. And you begin to wonder, what is wrong? If what is wrong was somebody did something in the spirit that is now reflecting in the physical. But when they touch that sheep and say, this is hers, they take the knife ready to cut. That knife backfires to their neck. When they take a knife, stretch it upon your jaw and say, as we cut this stool and this chair, the person loses his position. As they try to do it, may the knife backfire to them. Ah, as they take a knife and try to use something to represent your marriage and they want to separate your marriage, I decree and declare, as they touch the knife and touch them, turn it into your marriage, I decree and declare, may it be turned to the head. If you are here, shout I be saved. a wicked spirit. A witch doesn't care whether you are the sister, you are the brother, you are the auntie, or you are the what? A witch is a witch. You may be, be the one taking care of him or her, but still, once they go to their coven, they don't know you. All. They don't. One day, a preacher went for a night vigil and he closed early and decided to return so on his way driving home he saw uh, uh, he, he fell sleepy and he parked the car attempting to sleep immediately he intended to sleep another witch doctor carried a goat on his shoulders brought the goat to the roadside and says to the goat this goat you are a mecca as I tie your four limbs your hands are tied you cannot prosper he said, this goat, you are a mecca. As I tie your hind limbs, your feet is tied. You cannot move forward. Now, as he ties the four limbs and ties the hind limbs, what happens is that now they are not able, uh, what he tells a mecca, you cannot move forward, you cannot move backwards. Because your four limbs are tied, your hind limbs are tied. So you are remaining stagnant. So he does that and puts some sacrifices on there and leaves. So the man of God comes out of his car and look at the goat and says to the goat, the witch doctor said you are a mecca. I don't know you. A mecca? I also call you a mecca. A mecca? As somebody tied your four limbs, I lose your four limbs. And I declare to you, a mecca, go and prosper. Go and do well. Go and succeed. Now he touches the hind limbs and says, a mecca, he tied your hind limbs and said you'll be stagnated. 
I declare over you, you shall move forward. You shall move forward. You shall move forward. Can I tell you, can I prophesy over you? I prophesy over your life. Anybody that tied you, anybody that said you not prosper, anybody that said you remain stagnant, I decree and declare, I lose you. Go and prosper. Go and make it. Go and do well. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your hind limbs. I speak over your legs. Any chains on your legs that is making you stagnate, any chains on your legs that is causing delay, any chains on your life that is causing you to be stagnated, I prophesy. Let the chains be broken. 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 If you are here, shout, break. Yeah. Sit down. He says, witchcraft is practiced in COVID. He, says, he went with two people with him. Believe it or not, you can Tell me all you want to tell me. He says, as for you, don't believe in witchcraft. Fine. You don't have to believe in it. It's like telling me that you don't have intestines. The fact that you don't see your intestines doesn't mean you don't have them. You can pretend and assume and tell yourself you don't have one. But that doesn't mean it's not there. Listen, I, use, I used to be a preacher. I didn't believe in witchcraft. I did not. I'm telling you for sure. I did not until I experienced it myself years ago. About 18 years ago. 18 or 12. Hey, I forgot it. Can't calculate it. I one day, I was in school. And I went to school. And when I entered school, third year, what happened was I felt like everything was okay. I entered school third year. Second year, I was in the school. Everything was good. Everybody admired me. Good student. I go third year. I go to my head of department's office. And he tells me, David, you have been dismissed from the university. I said, sir, why? What did I do? He says, according to our institution, last year you did not register for the courses of the university. So, are you automatically expelled yourself from the university? I said, sir. I was in school. Didn't you see me? He said, David, I saw you. But according to the laws of the school, <laughs> you didn't register for the models. So you expelled yourself from the university. I said, that is a lie. I registered. He says, our system shows you didn't register. Okay, where is the receipt? Now, come to think of it. Young boy in university. Why, why would I keep the receipt? <laughs> why do I have to keep a receipt of my code models? I said, so I can't find it. Say, if you don't, if you do not produce that receipt, that shows that you registered for the models. You are fired. It's done. I go look for it. Nothing happens. And every time I'm in school, I go home every weekend. So weekend came, I went home. Immediately I got home. Somebody, I will not mention the name because it's online. Maybe she may be watching. If you are watching, you can watch. I'm talking about you. <laughs> now, immediately I get home. He says, David, why are you home? I said, ah, every weekend I come home. So why are you, every day, every weekend when I come home, you don't ask me why I'm home. Why are you asking me? Is everything okay at school? I said, yes, everything is fine. So are you sure? I said, oh, yes, auntie, everything is fine. I said, okay. I entered my room. He comes to knock. Are you sure everything is okay in your school? I said, hey, why are you asking me? Is everything okay? This is not the first weekend I've come home. Every time I come home, you don't ask me anything. This time around, you're asking me, why is everything okay? That devil is a liar. Spiritually, I prayed and God opened my eyes and I saw that spiritually in their witchcraft COVID, they have terminated my education and I went into prayer and I said, if God is God, let there be a switch. I prayed for and fasted for three months and some way, somehow, I entered the HOD's department. I said, sir, where is the counter, uh, is it the counterfoil or whatever? The duplicates of the receipt, because I have lost mine. He says, we can't find, because we've kept all, um, I was in computer engineering class, electrical engineering, computer engineering, all of you, your duplicates are at one place. Go search for it, because we cannot find. I went there. Can you imagine, the first bundle I touched, I pulled mine out. <laughs> I went to him and I said, sir, this is it. This is my duplicate. He says, okay, now, your exams for last semester was not marked. 
So go to every lecturer with your duplicate and tell them you registered, you were in class, and let them give you marks. I said, if they didn't mark, that means they've thrown this. I said, you go, they will give you marks. So I go to this lecture, programming lecture. I said, sir, this is my duplicate. So he says, ah, I'll give you marks. You. He looks at you and say, B. He looks at you and say, A. He goes to this one, B. A. B. A. I prophesy. And I declare over your life what they wish evil for you. When they go to their coven and they plan evil, they plan shame, they plan disaster, may God turn it to your advantage. 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 You advantage. If you are here, shout, I receive it. I remember that semester. Pro but, uh, they say, they say, um, which programming language was that? I've forgotten the language. Programming language, I, I looked at the paper. Africa is the only place we program those days on paper. Programming, how do you do it on paper? I, I was writing programming languages on paper. I looked at the exam sheet. I couldn't even remember anything. I laid my hands on it. I said, Father, take control. I started writing. So I didn't know what to expect the following semester. But God made sure they threw my paper away. So that they gave me a B. Hadunimi Kataya. I prophesy. When they want you to go down, God will use that situation to lift you up. When they want you to be disgraced, God will use that situation to bring you up. If you are here, shout, I receive it. Sit down. He says, I pray thee, divine unto me by familiar spirit and bring me he, and bring me and bring me him up whom I shall what? Whom I shall what? Let me paraphrase it for you to understand. He says divine unto me by familiar spirit. What he's trying to say he says whoever I name unto you work against this person. Bring them up. In the realm of the spirit, the person is not there. But witchcraft can make somebody who is not even in the present appear. He says, it's like it's me, somebody taking you to a witch doctor and telling the witch doctor, divine by familiar spirit, whoever I will call, destroy their marriage. Whoever I will call, take their position. Whoever, whosoever's name that I bring up, kill them. Whoever I bring up here, do this to them. When they call your name in witchcraft coven, may fire appear. When they call your name in witchcraft coven, may fire appear. When they call your name in that office to destroy you, may fire appear. When they call your name and want to divine against you, may fire appear. Somebody shall fire. Shall fire. Shall fire. Shall fire. He said, divine unto me by night. Witchcraft is practiced. They went at night. Say, at night. <laughs> so at witchcraft could be number one, they disguise themselves. Number two, they change it to another form. Number three is practice in groups, in covens. Number four, they mention names at witchcraft covens. They mention people's names. They call your name. They, they have your identity. It's like the way you watch Nigerian movies. When you are going to fight against someone, fight against a mecca. They bring their picture, and the witch doctor will, will shake himself and do some things. And some of you, you can watch Nollywood. Morning, afternoon, evening. You need prayer. Now, the, third, the fourth thing is that they, may, they do it by what we call divination. Say divination. They mimic the divine. They copy the divine. They look at that which is divine and try to make a counterfeit of it. Let me tell you this. Those of you that have got problem believing in some men of God, the fact that they are fake men of God is a sign they are genuine. Say genuine. If they could not be genuine, there would not be no fake. If there is no fake um, genuine dollar bill, you cannot make a counterfeit. Say they look at the genuine and try to make a fake out of it. 
Are you hearing me? Yes. So they practice divination by familiar spirit. Now, somebody explain familiar spirit as a spirit that is familiar to you. Say familiar spirit. A Bible scholar says familiar spirit is a spirit that is familiar to you. A witch doctor does not know you. Number one. So they connect with the forces in your own home that knows you and buy permission from them and attack you. Cindy, good. Today, any familiar spirit in your family, any familiar spirit at your workplace, I declare, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. When they mention your name, at any witchcraft coven, when they mention your mother, when they mention your husband, when they mention your children, at any witchcraft coven, let fire be released. Let fire be released. Let fire be released. Somebody shall fire. Shall fire. Shall fire. Shall fire. When they call your name David, instead of David appearing, fire appears. When they call your name Ben, instead of Ben appearing, fire appears. When they call your name Mary, instead of Mary appearing, fire will appear. Say any witchcraft coven that has my name, my children, my family on the agenda tonight by fire, by fire, I declare scatter. Give me Psalm 91 verse 5. David said, he that dwells in the secret place. How do you protect from the spirit of witchcraft? Dwell under the secret place of God. Say the secret place of God. When you are in the secret place of God, you don't fear no witch. In fact, witches are the least of the people you should be afraid of. The least. They are nobodies. Say thou shall not be afraid. Give me New King James. Give me King James to make it easy. Shall we read? He said, you shall not be afraid of the terror by what? Of the terror by what? There are terrors that fly at night. This scripture enforces that there are terrors that fly at what? At night. And there are some arrows that fly at what? At daytime. When you are sleeping, there are terrors and witches that will be flying at night. But he says, you shall not be afraid of them. For he shall give his angels to keep charge over you. To wash you in all your ways. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. I declare a thousand shall fall by your side. And ten thousands at your right hand. But as for you, he shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold the reward and the salary of the wicked. When witches are fighting people, they shall not get to you. When witches are destroying people's jobs, they shall not get to you. When witches are killing people, they shall not get to you. When witches are disgracing people, they shall not get to you. I declare you are preserved. You are protected. You are secured. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And any tongue that lifts itself against you, you shall contend it. Them that dig a pit for you, they shall fall into it. Them that dig a pit for you, they shall fall. Witchcraft destroys greatness. Say greatness. The, one of the main agendas of witchcraft, they destroy greatness. They cause sicknesses, premature death, accidents on the road. Chronic evil diseases. Give me Second Kings eleven, and then we pray. Second Kings eleven. Second Kings eleven, verse one. Second Kings eleven. Shall we read? One go. Second 
says, take me, just that verse alone. Shall we read one go? Atalia was a witch. When Ahaziah the king was dead, she arose and destroyed everyone that had potential to become a king. So that eh, she will be the one that will reign. Atalia saw that the king was there. Every, imagine a woman killing her own grandchildren. She killed all of them. Why? Because she does not want someone to rise. The spirit of jealousy. Nobody should get to your level. That's why they say the next class you move, before you move to become a full-time witch is jealousy. The course you take before you become a full-time witch is jealousy. Anybody that is jealous of you, that person is in the class about to graduate to become a witch. <laughs> say jealousy. When you are going up, they want to bring you down. Jealousy. When you get a good job, they start having attitude. Jealousy. When, when, when they see that you have gotten a Valentine present, they start to have attitude. Jealousy. I bind the spirit of jealousy. Because if you entertain jealousy in your heart, you become a candidate for witchcraft. The woman saw that the husband was there. She killed all of the people that had the potential to become king. You no, know, royal heirs were the people who had potential to become royals, to become kings. The woman killed every one of them. Listen to me. Some of you, you've got potential to become great men. But there are some Italians who rise up to destroy your potential. There are some Italians who rise up to kill your greatness. There are some Italians who rise up to make sure you don't go to your next level. There are some Italians who are limiting your destiny. Today, I am done. Be on your feet. Any Italian in your home, any Italian at your workplace, any Italian that want to destroy your greatness, we command, let them die by fire. I said, 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 let them die by fire. Listen, anybody that will temper with your greatness, on this altar, we release the sword of God to strike them. 